In this video, we're talking brand versus price. Is one more important than the other? And you know what, just a quick answer, yes, one is more important. You're gonna need to watch the video to figure out why. What's up friends, my name is Pi. Welcome to srlounge.com. This is your place for no nonsense photography education that focuses on the why. So look, I got this burning question recently from Don. It probably wasn't burning, it was probably like a mild, I don't know would you please answer this type question? He said this, if I had one question for you, Pi, and it may be one of the most basic ones, which is more important, brand or price? I often hear that customers sometimes see the price first, then brand. Some are drawn into a brand, but are taken away from a price. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. I'd love to answer. So Don, thank you for submitting the question. By the way, if you guys have questions you guys want us to answer, I'd love to do more of these where I get to spit some philosophies at you. Uh, so submit them to contact at SR Lounge. We'll link it up below in the description. So Don, I would indeed say one of these is more important than the other. And can you guess which one? I'm gonna tell you brand. And the reason why is because price is also important. Obviously, if something is priced significantly out of someone's budget, then really there's nothing to talk about, right? But the thing is that you don't ever consider actually busting out your wallet to pay for anything, no matter what the price is, unless value has already been established, okay? So value must first be established to give you a reason to spend your hard-earned cash on anything. So brand is part of this sort of value proposition, right? Your brand is what you've become known for. It's the experience, it's the product, it's everything tied and associated to this overall experience that is your product, right? If we think of this in context of some of the well-known brands out there, okay? And I know none of our photography companies and, and businesses are like these kind of companies, but they still serve a valid point. So let's start with Apple. And already I'm regretting this decision because I'm sure a lot of you would probably think different things. But look, let's think from the positive fanboy, fangirl side of Apple as a company, right? So if we think from that side, what does Apple really represent? What does that brand really represent? It represents good design, generally good reliability, good quality, you know, nice displays, something that we want, something that's kind of just appealing to have, electronics that are very appealing, very desirable, and kind of forward thinking, right? These are all the different experiences that we would associate with it. We associate, you know, having the genius bar. We associate, uh, you know, being able to speak to reps one-on-one. -on -one. We associate a, a nice clean brand with minimalism. These are all pieces of that brand. And before somebody actually gets their wallet out to pay for a new laptop, a new iMac, whatever it might be, those are the things that they've kind of come to know, that they've come to learn. So at the point of saying, yes, I actually do want that. That's when price actually becomes significant. That's when the person has to weigh, what do I want to spend? What do I have to spend versus how much it actually costs, right? Now let's think of something maybe less controversial, McDonald's. God, that's just as controversial as Apple. Look, let's assume that you like McDonald's. What is McDonald's known for from the standpoint of the person that appreciates it? It is known for consistency. It's known for the Big Mac. It's known for crispy French fries, which I'm not a huge fan of McDonald's. I mean, the Big Mac is amazing. Let's just say that. But the French fries, uh-huh, excuse me, but there are no other French fries in fast food that can beat fresh McDonald's. For, I'm sorry, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A fresh can beat McDonald's, but those two are my top two. And if you disagree, I will fight you. I'm just kidding. Just, just comment below. Let me know which ones you like most. But anyway, I, I digress. So McDonald's is known for these products, right? And no matter where you go, you're known to get that type of food and the type of service that you're typically known to get. Now, of course, when it comes to price, that's also part of McDonald's value proposition, right? Is that these are inexpensive. It's, it's inexpensive food, not the best for you, but inexpensive food. But why do I bring up these two different brands? Because there's another important piece here. McDonald's is a consumer oriented product. It's a product that's designed for everybody. At least that's the way they sell it. That's the way they pitch it. Everybody should love McDonald's. Everybody can afford McDonald's. It's, it, it's sold to a majority, a large audience, right? But if you look at Apple products, it's not priced that way. 
Apple products are priced as a luxury service, as a luxury product. They are not consumer products. These are products that are designed for a, a luxury audience, right? So we're looking at much smaller purchase numbers. We're looking at a much more boutique experience. We're looking at much higher prices per client that's actually spent. Now, if you think about this for one second, and, and I, I know these are food versus you know electronics, but I want you to think about this for one second. I want you to think of where photography actually falls on the spectrum of consumer-oriented product, mass law, uh, audience, or boutique product, luxury audience. I'm hoping you're landing on the boutique side, okay? I'm hoping you're landing in the luxury side because you know what? In terms of the consumer audience, nobody needs photography. Nobody needs photography because everybody has one of these. Well, I don't actually have a Galaxy. I'm borrowing it. I have an iPhone. Everybody has a good phone that has a good built-in camera. They don't need your services. They want them. In photography, when it comes to everyday consumer needs, that's satisfied by their phones or the dedicated cameras that are very inexpensive to get, right? So when they hire a professional photographer, what they're looking for is a luxury brand and product. This is one of the major issues that photographers make because they price themselves as a value product. They price themselves like McDonald's in a business where those companies just don't exist because people aren't looking for consumer oriented experiences in the photography industry. They're looking for a luxury experience. They're looking for something different, a unique experience that they can't create on their own. And yes, of course, your imagery is part of that but it's only part of this overall experience. The other pieces of that experience from your photography business's standpoint is how you interact with the clients. What does it look and feel like from the moment that they send you an email or call you to the point where they're booked, to the point where you're meeting with them to discuss what they want, to the point where you're actually doing the shoot, to how it's delivered, this entire experience, and yes, the actual product is one small piece of this, but that entire experience is your product. Okay, that is what you're selling. So that's what's represented by your brand from the website to the look to the product to how you communicate, speak and give them this experience. That is your brand. That has to be something that they want before they're given the option of prices. Why? Because if you give them the prop option of prices up front, that's all they look at. That's all they compare. And what they're looking at are not consumer products. It's not one hamburger versus another hamburger. Comparing a photography studio the same way that you might compare Honda Accords to a Toyota Corolla, it, it doesn't work that way. This is a luxury service and they vary dramatically and you can't compare them between price points. This is why I don't like photographers placing so much emphasis on pricing on their website. You wanna have like a starting at point, fine. But to put up your entire pricing is to focus clients and to have them fixate on comparing services by simply looking at the price. This works for consumer products where those products are largely homogenous, meaning you know, product A versus product B versus product C, those are all similar. Then you compare prices to see what's better, right? But that's not how our industry works. Product A versus B versus C are dramatically different. The studios and the experiences behind them are dramatically different and price is not a good comparison. So what I want you guys to do is to establish your brand, to establish the value. The best way to do this, obviously you need to have a good product, obviously you need your nice website, your good logo, your branding, all that kind of stuff. But beyond that point, the best way to do this is via the phone, on Zoom, or an in-person meeting. in person is obviously best, but with COVID we have other considerations to think about. But the phone is my favorite place. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss value propositions. We're gonna discuss what I can do for them. I'm gonna make them the hero in this entire process. And I'm gonna discuss every one of those components. I'm gonna tell them and put them into a specific product that I think fits their needs. I'm gonna deliver an actual service in the entire sales process. That's what sales is. And when I've got them to that place, then I'm gonna present a price point, okay? Then and only then is price relevant. That's where they understand the product. They understand the value proposition. And now they can think, well, do I want to spend that or do I want to you know, weigh other considerations and go a different direction? But that's the only place that they can make the appropriate decision. So to answer your original question, when it comes to brand versus price, 
which should be presented first. I want you to go with brand. I want you to go with brand, create a brand, a product, an experience, a service. Everything ties into this. Everything ties into that one word of brand. Create something that they want, something that they value. Then attach a price point to it not before. If you do it before, you're going to be in trouble. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. And look, if your goal is to start a six or seven figure studio, we literally have the entire operating manual for a multi seven figure studio in SLR lounge premium. It's under our business training system and it's four complete workshops from start to finish that are going to guide you through the entire process of designing a product, pricing a product, putting together the entire website, marketing plan, marketing and selling, and actually closing deals to create the business of your dreams. So be sure to check that out. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you're actually told when we upload videos. Comment below, let me know your favorite french fry, you know? Just wanna know. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.